Hey, what's going on guys? David Book here with you, your online marketing mentor. And today we're going to talk about identifying and changing beliefs that are not serving you in your network marketing or online business. A lot of times people believe that their success is directly related to the company that they're in. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe you're in a health and wellness company, you don't believe that those products or that company is good, so you move to a different company, you know, promoting the same kind of thing, health and wellness, you know, your vitamins, your uh, your health gels, you know, your different nutritional uh, products and services, you know, you're jumping from company to company to company, uh, thinking that uh, really it's the company's fault you're not having success instead of looking at your own, okay, and that is one example of a belief that uh, people often have that is not serving them, right? I'm guilty of it too, right? I've been through four or five different network marketing companies over the last seven years. You know, I've struggled a lot at the beginning. It was really tough. I had no idea what was going on. Um, all I knew was I was supposed to make a list of my friends and family, uh, call them all up, invite them to a home meeting, and then ask them if they're ready to get started. <laughs> and, you know, it really didn't work all that well. And if you're like me, then you probably had the same experience. You know, it was very frustrating uh, to go through building a business uh, that I just didn't really believe that uh, that success was possible, right? And then, and then jumping to another company and, and continuing the same belief. It wasn't until I realized um, that I needed to change that belief that, to, to realize that I was the problem, I was the common denominator in all of those companies. You know, I was. There's other people that had success. You know, one of my best friends, he's having uh, good success in one of the companies that we joined. And you know, I saw success around me, um, but I was failing. You know, myself, and so I had to realize that I was the problem. You know, so once you can and identify and start to change some beliefs that are not serving you, you can end up making a lot more. Uh, money and you can get a lot bigger results in whatever business that you choose. Okay, uh, you need to align your belief in the direction of the results that you want to uh, accomplish. Okay, so if you're in if you're in a business and you your goal is to uh, produce money, you know, to be able to make money so that you can spend more time with your kids, so you can take more vacations, so you can do more of the things that you love. Uh, with the people that you love, you, know, you, need, you need to align your beliefs in that direction. You know, you need to identify the beliefs that are not uh, helping you move in that direction, and you need to change them or dissolve them, get rid of them, right? So if you want to recruit and produce uh, more results in your business, and you want to do that more simply and more easily, um, you, can, you can just change your beliefs, right? You can believe uh, that it's easy to do those things. You can believe... Uh, that it's possible to achieve results, and that will go a long, long way in helping you actually get there. Okay, there's a there's a weird thing in your mind. It's called the reticular activating system, and it talks about and well, what does it talk about? Uh, what it does is is it filters um, all the information that's coming into your mind, and we're going to talk about that in just in just a few minutes. All right. So if you want to accomplish uh, your outcomes, okay, you've got to align your beliefs in a single direction. You've got you've got to make sure that what's on the inside. Uh, is in complete and total alignment uh, with what's on the outside, right? What you want on the outside. You've got to line up your beliefs, um, and you have to make sure that you're all you're pointed in the right direction. Okay, so first you have to identify your beliefs, all right? Then you have to identify what your beliefs control. Okay, and this is where we get to some of those filtration systems. All right, you have senses. All right, we have. We have all the senses available to us, but one some of the most important ones when it comes to your beliefs is sight, hearing, and feeling. Okay, uh, not so much like I f the you know I feel the wood on my desk, and, you know I feel the grain, but more like I'm feeling excited, like that kind of feeling, right? So, your brain uh, actually is able to uh, perceive and uh, compute over two million little chunks of information. Uh, every second, right? Your subconscious brain is doing all of this stuff. It's paying attention to all the processes that are going in your, on in your body. It's paying attention to all of the things in your surroundings. You know, whether it's your breathing, um, your heart rate, you know, the senses on the bottom of your feet, you know, the light over in the corner, uh, all the different things that uh, are going on around you. Your subconscious mind pays attention attention to that stuff. Okay. Um, What's really interesting, though, is that the, the conscious mind cannot pay attention to all that stuff uh, at the same time, right? You can focus on it. You know, if I, 
if I say uh, that the bottom of my feet is feeling a slight pulsation, it's nice and warm, you know, your your attention and my attention both go to the bottom of our feet, right? So we can we can consci consciously pay attention to that stuff, but once we're concentrating on something else, like speaking, uh, you know, creating a video or you know, building a blog post or persuading someone to pull out their credit card and buy something from you, uh, once once you get to focusing on that then everything else kind of goes away into the subconscious, right? So your breathing, your heart rate, you know, your di your digestion, your other bodily functions, that's done by your subconscious, right? And when your mind is looking for and filtering things uh, out away from your conscious mind, um, it's doing so based on beliefs that you have uh, about what's good for you and the outcomes that you've set for yourself. Okay, so you can consciously take action toward what you want by changing your, you know, subconscious beliefs. Right? This is it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. So this is a personal development process that I've been through uh, multiple times. You know, with multiple different beliefs, and it's a, it's a constant battle to change those beliefs. But it's a step in the direction that you want to go. Right? And this is a step. In changing the beliefs that will allow you to get what you want, right? So, your unconscious mind is uh, creating things all the time with the information on uh, chunks that it gets uh, from your surroundings, right? And it's it's doing a lot of different things. Mainly, it's it's uh, deleting, it's distorting, and it's generalizing a lot of things, right? You know, so like an example is: have, have you ever been running around the house? looking for your car keys, like trying, you know, you're almost late for work. You're asking people, you know, have you seen my keys? Have you seen my keys? You're looking all over for the normal places that you put put them. And then eventually someone stops you. They're like, hey, man, the keys are in your hand. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, they're right there. That's your mind deleting the keys from your from your hand. Like your subconscious just took them completely away from reality. You had no idea they were there, hence why you're looking all over the place, right? You know, maybe you're walking through the woods, and out of the corner of your eye, you see uh, what you think is to be a, a snake, right? Uh, but when you look and focus your full attention on it, you know, after you get scared, jump, and then, and then you look at it, uh, you notice that it's just a curvy stick. And uh, that's a, an example of your brain kind of distorting something, right? Um you have you have symbols stored in your brain uh, uh, that basically generalize um, for different things, right? Uh, the stick and the snake is a good example. Um, you generalize like the concept of a face, okay? Everybody's face is a little bit different, but you generalize it as a face because you know it has two you know two eyes, a nose, mouth, some hair, ears. It's a face, so everybody's calls it a face. You know, we we can remember individual faces of of people that we see all the time. But if we had to memorize every little uh, nook and cranny of every single person's face, it would drive us insane. So that's an example of, of also how we generalize information with our subconscious mind. Okay? Symbols are a big deal. If you pay attention uh, a little bit closer now that you've kind of uh, learned a little bit about this, but you'll, you'll notice that symbols often are replaced and generalized for things. Um, whether it's like a stop sign, like the octagon, when you see that shape, it automatically makes you think of something, right? You know, when you think of a like a a star, right, or a pentagram, you automatically think of that symbol. So it's just pretty good examples of that, right? Now, your your unconscious mind and your and your conscious mind is similar to like riding a horse. Okay, so picture that you're out in the middle of the the woods, you're on your horse with a couple buddies, you guys are all riding horses and you come up across a, a river, all right? You're trying to get somewhere that's, you know, maybe 10, 15 miles away, trying to get back to the ranch. It's hot, you know, you're tired, you're ready for some dinner and you want to get home. So you're trying to lead your horse to the ranch to go home, but the, the horse, they, they see a river, right? And they're thirsty. So what they're going to do is they're going to go straight for the river and they're going to drink from the river until they're not thirsty anymore uh, and you can't do anything about it. You can just try to steer them away, you can give them a little spur action, you can kick them in the gut. They're not going to go because they're thirsty, right? This is a good example of your, your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. Your conscious mind is you on the horse, okay? Your unconscious mind is the horse. The horse is going to go where it believes it needs to go and there's nothing that you can do about it if it's set in that direction, all right? So if you have a belief that's telling uh, you're unconscious uh, that you have to do things a certain way, 
you as the conscious mind are not going to be able to, to, to sway your unconscious to do that, right? That's a self-limiting belief. That is how that we can get stuck in places and we can't figure out how to get out of it, right? So the, the filtration that comes, you know, that uh, your brain does on the information that comes to you is entirely controlled by your beliefs. So change your change your beliefs, change your filtration, change change the way that you think about the world, right? So a lot of people they have a belief that uh, money is evil, right? Or rich people is evil. This is a very common belief. You know, if you take a look at popular culture, you know, Hollywood movies, um, the majority of the villains in the stories that come out in the movies. Um, and different uh, different stories around our culture, you know, maybe it's comic books or TV shows or whatever it is. A lot of times the villain is rich, right? Got a lot of money, and uh, a lot of times the hero or the heroine of the story is actually really poor. So the the poor people of the world they identify with the hero, and they end up thinking that if you end up getting rich, then it automatically makes you evil. I, the, you know, I come across this all the time, even in just my personal conversations with uh, what, who I think are, are well-respected, intelligent individuals, I still find this belief sometimes in people. It's interesting. You know, so just ask yourself, you know, do I have the belief where I think that if I become rich that, that I'm going to be evil? You know, if I become rich, am I going to have to spend less time with my family? If I become rich, am I going to have to uh, get new friends? Things like that. You know, those are beliefs that will stop you from success, that will sabotage you, right? So you really need to be in control about your beliefs about you, your abilities, uh, what you want to accomplish with your business, with your personal life. Um, you really need to believe in your company and your products, okay? Whether you make them or whether you're representing another company through a network marketing business. Uh, you need to have the belief there because it's going to come through in your conversations with your your prospects, your clients, your customers, and um, it's really going to have a, a, a profound effect on how they view you, right? Their perspective of you. Uh, you need to to believe in your leads, believe in your customers, believe in your teams, and believe in their abilities because. Uh, if you if you underestimate people and you don't believe in their potential and what they can do, then you're actually going to limit them by believing that. It's going to come out again in your marketing and your interactions with those people and uh, whatnot. So you also need to believe that you are capable of creating uh, content, creating a business, creating processes, and creating a culture that is actually worth something because that you know I struggled with this for a long time that the work that I would do uh, I didn't feel was going to be worth it to to the consumer to the person looking at the page and therefore I didn't do a lot of it you know I didn't do a lot of blogs a lot of videos because I felt like my stuff just wasn't that good it wasn't that worth it um, contrary to, to what I believed um, it actually was really good stuff and it started creating me some success over a long period of time because I didn't put much attention and focus into it. Uh, but once I realized that my, my stuff actually has value and can help people change their lives by building a business and creating the lifestyle that they, that they really want to have for themselves and their family, once I realized that, that, you know, that, that belief was gone and it allowed me to really step forward into, into who I am and what I want to do, uh, through my business, through my network connections, and, and so on. So you just have to know that all behavior is unconscious, okay? Everything that everything that you instinctually do comes from your unconscious. And your unconscious actions always have a positive intention, even though the outcome or the behavior uh, may end up being negative, all right? It's just, a, it's just a little thing to keep keep in mind, all right? So there's some steps that you can take to, to identify and change some of the self-limiting beliefs that you may have about uh, yourself, about your business, about money, about relationships. I'm just going to go over these real quick. Um, the first one is is positive intention, right? Uh, believing that just because you believe uh, that that you think about and that you meditate on and that you believe something will happen, that will actually happen. This happens a lot of times to people who are. Uh, avid followers of the law of attraction. They believe they can just think things into existence. This is only half the battle. You have to do the acting part too. And if you believe that you can just think things into existence, you're going to be one of those analysis paralysis kind of people and you're not going to really get a lot of stuff done. Okay. Uh, number two is redef redefining. Okay. Taking a belief and redefining its meaning. 
All right. So if you believe that all rich people are evil, then you're probably not going to go ahead and go through with an opportunity or a business that could uh, make you rich. Right. So why don't you just redefine that belief saying that uh, being rich will make me evil, but uh, being rich will allow me to help as many people as I possibly can. You know, create a metaphor or a vision in your head where uh, becoming rich will actually allow you to help more people. You know, create a, a symbol of um, peace and love. You know, maybe a dove or maybe a child eating a uh, child with a roof over their head, something like that. Because when you become rich, you can give back so much to the community. And that's one of my goals is, is to be able to give back um, – as much as I possibly can, you know, through through product services, building businesses, and just straight up, you know, volunteering and nonprofiting. Right? I want to be able to help uh, the people of the earth, really, because without without uh, without everybody here together, uh, I think it'd be uh, a very sad place. So, uh, redefining you can redefine uh, any belief that you want to to mean something else. Um, consequences, okay? So you look at your belief and you look at the negative consequences of continuing that belief, right? So if I believe that money uh, and becoming rich will make me evil, what's the negative consequences of continuing that? I'm never going to get rich, right? Which meant, means I'm never going to have time uh, to spend with my family. I'm never going to have time to do the vacations. I'm never going to have the money to be able to afford the things that I want in life, right? But then you look at the flip side of the coin. What are the positive consequences of uh, continuing um, to believe that uh, becoming rich will make you evil. The positive consequences of continuing to believe that is also that you're never going to become rich. And you're just going to be just like everyone else that you've ever met in your life. And you're, you're going to be uh, not very special. You know, you're going you're gonna to live a good life, but it's not going to be real exciting. You're not going to do uh, a lot of huge, amazing things. And that's, that's okay. You know, it's positive, right? Um, you don't have to get sick or you don't have to die or you don't have to come across any unusually uh, horrible circumstances because you believe that money is rich, but you're just not going to be able to achieve big things, right? Number four, chunking down, okay? Taking a belief and uh, focusing on a more specific uh, part of that belief, okay? This goes along with number five, which is chunking up, which is coming zooming out and uh, going to a more abstract focus, all right? So with your beliefs, when you're chunking down, you know, you, you can think about, you know, I believe that um, if I put in, you know, 80 hours a week and talk to every single person on the phone uh, that has anything to do with my business, that I will eventually get results. If you take that belief and you go more specific and you say, all right, if I can speak to everybody individually and talk to them about specific needs x y and z and get them to understand that process will they then want to join my business if if that is a true belief then you can chunk down even further you can go even more specific into the belief uh, into actually how you're going to uh, go through that specific business process to allow you to dive deep into the detail of those beliefs and the of the things that you're thinking about of uh, implementing into your business and uh, to see the really detailed picture. Okay. Chunking up is exactly the opposite. You go, you go and get the, like the really big picture of what you're doing. All right. So you look back at like the global view, the societal view of how your belief fits in. Right. Uh, the sixth way that you can help change and identify a belief is to uh, attach a metaphor to it. Okay. Like I told earlier about the, the conscious and the subconscious being like you and, and the horse, out riding by the river, um, you can. What you can do is you can tell yourself, you can tell your mind a story um, that is that will allow your uh, conscious mind to remember that belief in a different light. Okay, so if you believe that you can control your unconscious brain, that you can control all the two two million chunks of information that are coming in at any one time, uh, that story about the horse and the rider, that metaphor. It's probably going to change your belief a little bit, or at least going to you know put a crack in the foundation, so you can kind of see uh, there's a lot of things going on in your brain that you can't control, right? Um, the next thing you can do is you can change the frame size, which is kind of like like a chunking up, um, but it's really looking just at the bigger picture. Okay, you can see the little things that you're doing daily in your business to make sure that you're successful 
uh, generating, more, generating more leads, creating more sales, recruiting more people into your business. Um, but at the rate that you're going, when you zoom out, can you see the bigger picture? You know, can you look and, and find out, you know, if you keep going at the rate you're going, uh, will you be successful? Uh, that's changing the, sh the frame size, really. A good, a good analogy or a good uh, metaphor kind of imagery to look at is you have like one little minnow in the ocean and he's, and he's being chased by a little bit bigger fish. Right. And then uh, you zoom out a little bit and there's a there's an even bigger fish chasing those two little fish. And you zoom out some more. <coughs> excuse me. People will drink water. You zoom out some more and uh, there's an even bigger fish followed by a fishing boat with some nets. And then, you know, followed by a little fishing island out in the middle of the water. You know, you look at the bigger picture of what's going on. So you look at your business, how you interact with your customers, how your beliefs interact with that environment. And then uh, you zoom out and you see you, you see the bigger picture of what's going on. So the next one is change, changing your outcome, right? So if you can't change the belief, maybe you can change the outcome to fit the belief, right? That is an option um, when your beliefs can't be changed, which in my opinion, I don't think a belief can ever not be changed. But if you run across a point where you have a belief that's so strong, then maybe it's time to look at changing the outcome to fit the belief. Okay, so what outcome is your belief leading you to? What if you change the outcome? And in my new outcome, or in your new outcome, uh, does your belief now align? Okay, so those are some of the questions that you want to ask. Okay, and uh, some of these other ones, I'm just going to go through them real quick because this would be a crazy long video uh, if I did go into them in detail. Okay, so uh, you have uh, creating a counterexample, showing something that uh, proves the opposite of what your belief is. Changing your model of the world, okay? You, you perceive the world in the way that you've been taught to perceive it, the way your experiences have molded it, and uh, it's different from everybody else's, right? But your perception of the world is not necessarily how it is. It's just your model of the world. So just like looking at a menu at a restaurant, if you don't like what's on the menu, you can get up and leave. You can change the menu. You can go to a different place. Um, if you're looking at a map and you're trying to navigate to a certain place, if you don't like where you are, change the map. Go somewhere else. Okay, That is how you can, you can change your model of the world. You can change it any time you like. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to do that, uh, but the poss possibility does exist. Okay. Next thing is to, to change your reality strategy a little bit, okay? Ask yourself, how do you know this belief is real? Can you give some sort of empirical evidence, logical uh, thought process that would allow you to believe that this belief is real? You know, uh, Money buys you happiness. That's a common belief that people have. Is that belief actually real? I don't know. Ask yourself, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, the next thing is to to apply that belief to yourself. The, the example that, that pops out in my mind is uh, cancer causes death. Okay, we all know that. Uh, applying that belief to itself is saying something like this. Okay, It's time the cancer got cancer and died. Right. <laughs> That's an interesting way to apply a belief to itself. But you kind of get the idea. So... I think it's important in business and in life in general to, to maintain a good awareness of what your beliefs are. And if you're unsure of what your beliefs are, to, to really make sure you dig down deep and find out what you believe, okay, what your purpose is, and what kind of cause uh, that you are the champion of. Because if you don't know those things, it's going to be really hard to build a business on top of uh, a foundation where you don't really know um, you know who who you are and what you're all about. So it's my suggestion to you to to search within yourself, look for those beliefs that may be hindering you from success in creating your own business and building an income online, and really look at uh, at how you're doing things. See if you can change those beliefs. See if you can uh, get yourself in a place where your beliefs then align with your desired outcome. So guys, with that, it's been fun. Um, I'm gonna cut this video off for now. My throat is getting a little hoarse. Uh, so I don't want to do any more uh, <laughs> whining and scratching at you. So I'll see you guys on the flip side. Hope you enjoyed today. Uh, make sure that if you found value from this post that you let me know in the comments down below. Make sure uh, you ask any questions that you have. Feel free to reach out. I'm always here to help you guys. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. Adios.